Thank you all so much for joining us to discuss this evening the findings of the African American Historic Resources Survey Project. My name is Blake McDonald, and I'm the Architecture Survey Manager at the Virginia Department of Historic Resources. This meeting is part of a public input process to obtain community feedback on the draft report on African American Historic Resources in Fairfax County. Uh, community feedback it's going to inform the revised version and the final version of the report the department of historic resources or dhr partnered with fairfax county to complete this project and so joining me tonight we have the entire project team we have um, my dhr colleague aubrey von lindern who is the architectural historian for the northern portion of the state we have Fairfax County Historic Resource Branch Chief Denise Dressel and Fairfax County Heritage Resource Planner Lauren Kviklis. And last but not least, we also have our contracted architectural historian who completed the survey project and the report for us, and that is Mary Ruffin Hanbury with Hanbury Preservation Consulting. You're going to hear from several of them in just a moment. Um, we are going to be taking questions and comments following a brief presentation explaining a little bit more about the project. So you're welcome to submit feedback either through the comments um, button at the bottom of your screen. It looks like a little thought bubble. Um, those comments will respond to uh, at the beginning of the, the Q&A session. Um, and we'll also be taking folks who want to raise their hand virtually and um, ask questions that way. Um, so I will talk more about how that's going to work um, in just a moment when it's time for Q&A. Uh, I'm now going to share my screen and Aubrey is going to tell us a little bit about uh, the Department of Historic Resources and how this uh, project um, involves our agency. So bear with me for one moment while I pull my screen up. Okay, hopefully you should all be able to see my screen. And Aubrey, you can tell me to advance slides when you're ready. Okay, thank you, Blake. Uh, again, I'm, my name is Aubrey Von Linder and I'm the architectural historian for the Northern Region with the Department of Historic Resources. Um, I'm very excited to be here today to discuss this great project um, that we are seeing, we've seen come to a, hopefully a, a com completion. Um, the Virginia Department of Historic, you can actually advance the slide, sorry, Blake. The Virginia Department of Historic Resources is the State Historic Preservation Office. The State Historic Preservation Offices were created back in 1966 with the passage of the Historic Preservation Act. And DHR's mission is to foster, encourage, and support the stewardship of Virginia's significant historic architectural, archaeological, and cultural resources. Advance, please. DHR has multiple programs to help fulfill our mission. Three of our most popular are the Historic Rehabilitation Tax Credit Program. We manage a state tax credit, and we also manage the federal uh, tax credit program um, that is actually overseen by the National Park Service. Another program we manage is the Virginia Landmarks and the National Register of Historic Places and the Highway Marker Program. Advance. One of the most important goals of any preservation program should be documenting historic resources. Document, documentation of historic resources through architectural and archaeological survey supports all of DHR's programs. Survey can be the first steps towards additional preservation activities in any community. Survey records support local preservation planning by identifying where historically significant resources are located. And it helps, it's a great planning tool um, to be proactive rather than reactive. Uh, next slide. One of the programs within um, DHR is the cost share and survey, excuse me, cost share survey and planning program. One of the ways DHR can help localities accomplish a survey project is through our cost share program. Um, this current project that we're talking about tonight is a cost share project. Money through our cost share grant can support locality driven preservation planning projects like the one we're here to talk about with you today. The cost share grant is co a competitive grant, which the locality can apply for and is and does require the locality provide partial funding, uh, project funding, while DHR provides the rest and also provides administrative support in managing the grant. Projects can 
can consist of historic resource surveys and or national historic place nominations. Okay, and advance. And at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Denise from the county, who's going to discuss this project in more detail, its results and kind of the background. Sure, thank you, Aubrey. Um, so again, I'm Denise Dressel. I'm the branch chief of the Heritage Resources um, branch in the planning division of the Department of Planning and Development in Fairfax County. So in um, December of 2020, the History Commission announced a major initiative to develop a in, uh, research inventory, identifying publications, documents, records, and other materials that uh, document the histories of African American communities in Fairfax County. Uh, the purpose of the Planning Division's 2021 cost share grant application was to complement the History Commission's initiative by carrying out a reconnaissance level survey of African American historic resources in Fairfax County and completing a survey report which would provide historical context and recommendations for future preservation projects. The Par Department of Planning and Development contributed funds towards the matching grant as did the History Commission and the Architectural Review Board and we thank both boards for their for the support that they've shown for this effort. Working in collaboration with the History Commission, staff identified 21 historically African American communities and 29 individual properties to be surveyed. Our goal, uh, next slide please. Thank you. Our goal was to better understand, um, or to gain a better understanding of Fairfax County's African American history and to document historically significant places in the county which are part of that history. Architectural surveys are for identification purposes only and they place no new restrictions on an identified property. And at this point, I'd like to mention uh, here that the survey covered the entire county except for the Gum Springs area, which was, um, it, it is part of a more intensive survey effort focusing specifically on Gum Springs. The Gum Spring study will take place over the course of the next year or so. Um, we're in the process right now of evaluating responses that we received to a request for proposal we developed in cooperation with the community um, for the selection of the consultant to do that survey work. Next slide, please. Thank you. I think um, at this point, Mary Ruffin is going to take, yes, I'm getting yes, a nod. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I am, and I, I apologize um, for not um, facing you, as it were. Uh, I'm having some technological difficulties, um, so operating from a phone. But, you know, I guess in the year 2023, we can do that. Um, my colleague, David Lewis, with the William & Mary Center for Archaeological Research, and I were the consultants for this project, and as Denise mentioned, um, we worked off of a list that was developed by the County History Commission. And our job was to go out and see uh, what was on the ground, uh, what was actually remaining in terms of physical resources from these places um, that had been documented with the history. So next slide, please. I, uh, I lived in Northern Virginia in the late 80s when I graduated from college and yet I never realized just how big Fairfax County is. Um, there are parts of Fairfax County I thought were Alexandria for sure. But one of the things I think was very good about how this project was designed before it was even put out for bid was that there was a great deal of thought put into the geographic diversity of Fairfax County and making sure that we had representation as it was possible broadly distributed throughout the entire county. Um, and I can tell you, um, just looking at my mileage receipts, that that is indeed was the case. Um, and we saw huge swaths of the county. Um, but also when you think about historic resources, some of which some communities we looked at, which were very old at the, at the time, um, you know, they, they were not, well, they were part of the same county, but they were, they were not as tied in and not as urbanized. And I think that's something that's important to remember um, is part of this process is also recognizing that um, anything over 50 years old can be considered historic. 
Um, and that puts us up into the 1970s. And yet from 1970s to now, Fairfax County has changed remarkably. And one of the important things about doing this kind of survey work is that when you're in a rapidly urbanizing, rapidly growing county, change comes. So it's our job to record these things, first of all, so that the county can make informed land use decisions and can know what is on the ground, um, can have that flagged in their systems so when land use decisions are made, they can take into account these resources. But also, um, you know, preservation doesn't save everything. So we need to get out and record things that are there in case they aren't there in another 50 years so that we have a record and we have a photograph so that historians in the future will have some good information about what was on the ground in 2023. So next slide. We um, surveyed a, a pretty wide variety of resource types. Um, this is First Baptist Church of Vienna, um, great um, vernacular church frame, wonderful little um, bell tower, um, entrance tower uh, right there off of the downtown area. Next one. Um, this is the Quandra Road School. I um, am a, a late convert to modernism, but uh, really enjoyed this school. It has a lot of what we call integrity, which is um, to oversimplify it a little bit. It's the ability of, of a building to communicate its historic appearance. Um, so it's got these wonderful banks of windows um, still in a historic configuration, um, a response architecturally to trying to get a lot of good natural light in there for all the students who are reading and studying. Um, this school was interesting for a couple of reasons, not only because it was a historically African-American school, but first of all, I had a very nice conversation with the principal who was very interested in history and, and very much would love to get some of his students engaged in researching and understanding more about the history of their school. And also just for its, its association, if only by name, by the Quander family, um, which is a um, African-American family in Northern Virginia and in Maryland. Um, that has an unbelievably um, wonderfully documented genealogy. Um, so it was nice to have um, at least one resource that's very specifically tied to the Quanders, at least through the name. Next slide. This is the Sons and Daughters of Liberty Cemetery, which is tucked in um, into a park in Fairfax County. Um, it was associated with a fraternal organization and a and a lodge, the building of which no longer remains. Um, one thing we have learned um, just in some of the initial uh, reports and reviews of the draft is this may actually be technically two cemeteries. So we hope if any of you all have information in that regard uh, to let us know, as you look at it on the ground, there's not a big wall uh, separating one set of grades from another. So it's, it's hard to read on the ground, but if any of you all have um, tips or sources or can confirm that, that would be great to know. Next slide, please. This is the Tinner Hill neighborhood. Um, this is a neighborhood that in some senses is fairly well documented. If any of you all have been there, there's a wonderful park and a marker that talks about Tinner Hill and its history. Um, this is a neighborhood that um, lies partially in Fairfax County and partially in Falls Church, which is a incorporated municipality. Of course, that's part of the story. Um, it's a story of gerrymandering municipal boundaries to dilute African-American voting power. Um, and, and because of that is tied to the founding of the first rural chapter of the NAACP. So an extremely important community um, according to at least one residence I spoke with, um, pretty much all of those houses are still um, owned and controlled by tenor descendants um, or people who, who families who've lived there since the beginning. Um, and one of the things I'm particularly pleased with with this project is that we had the capacity in terms of the budget and the number of resources we were to survey that we could survey each of the individual properties so that if this neighborhood um, decided it wanted to be a historic district, 
one of the requirements for a district is that every resource within it is surveyed individually and that's done. Uh, so we have basically done some of the groundwork uh, that could support a historic nomination if this community wanted it. It certainly has a great story and I think one that would merit that, but um, it would need to be something that's community driven. So I'd be a big fan and I'd be supportive if, if they did. Next slide. Um, this is the David Pitt Community Center um, in the Cyburn area. Um, and when you, you look at it at first, um, it's got these great murals, but, but architecturally um, it's concrete block. It's, it's sort of nondescript. If it didn't have the murals, it might not, might not grab your attention. Um, but what is very interesting about it is that it was associated with the Little Bethel Baptist Church, which is no longer at that site. Congregation has moved elsewhere, although um, there is a cemetery behind this building. Um, it's a cemetery that uh, has a number of markers, a number of graves marked with large um, stones of white quartz, which is, um, I won't say typical, but a not, an, a non -unco not uncommon um, tradition for marking African-American burials. Um, and it was also associated uh, with a group called the Immediate Relief Association, uh, which is an example of a self-help organization, uh, which is also a type of organization that has a long tradition in African-American communities, uh, like a mutual aid association, groups of people who, who band together and pool their resources uh, to help other members or people in the community as need arise because so often they were shut out of traditional um, insurance or lending opportunities um, by you know, racist guidelines and laws. So it, it is uh, very much tied into that tradition of self-help that grew up in the response of being shut out of other opportunities. Um, and I think that within itself is a fascinating topic. Next slide. Um, that may be the end of my slides and my coverage until we get to the Q&A. So I'm going to turn my mic off and I think pass this back to Denise. I think you're, I'm going to take this, right? <laughs> yeah, this is all right. right again. <laughs> yeah, um, we're actually, um, Denise, please step in if, it, of course. Uh, so, what, so where do we go from here with this project? Um, the next step, we're, we're going to accept public feedback on the draft survey report through March 24th. Um, DHR will hopefully incorporate this feedback into a final draft of the sur survey, um, or it will be used to inform uh, the future of this, this project as well. DHR encourages the use of the report to identify um, additional preservation projects, including further survey and or National Register of Historic Places nominations. Also, we can talk about DHR grants, uh, the grants that are available, uh, not necessarily all through our office, but through other resources as well. Um, and I'm happy to, you know, answer questions on those as uh, if, if they were to come up. Um, and at next slide, I think is the, okay. Um, and I think I'll turn this back over to Denise to talk about this part. <laughs> yeah, so we have received um, some comments from you all already and comments were coming in today. Thank you so much. Uh, we really do want your response, your feedback. Um, we went out and surveyed what we knew, but we know that there's a lot that we don't know. So let us know what we don't know. Let us know what we missed. Um, and, and you can provide those comments. You can get my contact information and Blake's contact information by going to this website, or I've tried it a couple of times. I just Googled Fairfax County African American survey and this website just popped right up. So if you uh, don't want to remember that big long URL, just Google Fairfax County African American survey and you'll get the draft survey report where, which you can read and then um, our contact information if you have any comments. And I think I think that's it for our presentation, but um, we're happy to answer any questions now. Great, and I'm gonna go ahead and close the sharing of the screen so I can easily see the comments and questions that are coming in. 
Um, thank you to all of our presenters. Um, so I see that there might be some issue with uh, unmuting. Um, you may be able to um, unmute yourself uh, if you go to where your name is on the attendee list and hit uh, the little mic button next to it. Um, if not, if someone could put that in the chat that they're not able to do that and I will troubleshoot for us. Um, I also see a comment that there are two separate sons and daughters of Liber Liberty Cemeteries. One is in Annandale and one is in Vienna. The one that was pictured in the presentation is from Annandale. So that's a really helpful comment and exactly what Denise was referring to um, in terms of you know, the things that we know versus the things that uh, community members know and can help help us to enhance this product. So we'll certainly make note of that um, for the for the revised um, for the revised report. Thank you for that. Okay. At this point, it looks like those are our only two comments in the chat, um, and it looks like we're still having a bit of trouble with unmuting. Um, so give me just one moment to troubleshoot that. Thank you for indicating that that was an issue. Um, so it looks like um, if you're able to raise your hand, I can call on you and unmute you. Um, so I see that I've got one person here, Sally uh, Lyons, who is uh, has their hand raised, and I'm going to ask them to unmute themselves. Okay, you should be unmuted now. Are either of you all able to? Um... Can you hear me? Can you can you yes. hear me? Yeah, oh, Sally. Both of you now, so right it looks yeah. like I've got Sally first. So, um, Sally, go ahead. Uh, my question is regarding uh, potential archaeological sites. I didn't see very many listed. Was that being discreet, or um, are you interested in archaeological sites? Uh, other than the cemeteries. Other than the cemeteries, yeah. Like how this. Sites? Go ahead, Mary. I would say this was an architectural survey. Mm -hmm. um, so, so it was de facto not archaeological, although we did get um, some some uh, record of Odrick's Corner, which has some ruins that are above ground, but archaeological sites were beyond the scope of the project. So, I mean, but I, but you obviously are, are in the know when you asked about it being discreet. Um, if there were archaeological sites, we'd have to be careful about publicizing because we don't want people going out to loot them. Not that any of the good people listening to this would, but you just never know. Um, but yes, it was it was an architectural survey. So there is interest in archaeology, but it was beyond the scope of this project. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Barbara, if you'd like to go ahead, you should be unmuted. I am. Thanks for that help. I see I did have to click on the raise your hand thing first before I was able to unmute myself. Perfect. Glad that um, when there was a mention of the David Pinn um, Center uh, being related to a um, mutual aid association. And I didn't know. I know Herndon had an odd fellows hall. I mean, there's no physical remnants of that left. That was a mutual aid um, organization. So I just didn't know if uh, any place else in the county, if there were any odd fellows halls. Well, uh, so Fairfax County just uh, successfully nominated the, well, in, in collaboration with the um, community, the odd fellows hall in Gum Springs to the National Register. Um, and I think there was a uh, I think we just received information that there was not fellows hall in Vienna as well. So, um, so yes, there were, there were. Odd fellows halls in the, in other odd fellows halls in the county. Yeah, so there are no, are there any physical remnants left? Is that something that'll be included in the report? The or maybe odd, you already included in the report. I don't know. Yeah, so the odd fellows hall in gum springs is standing. 
um, right. in, in, in still um, is used by the Masons. Um, I don't know about the uh, Odd Fellows Hall in Vienna. That was just actually somebody just emailed us about that today. So I cool. we haven't you know uh, looked into it further, but I am going to call the person and ha and, com and have a conversation with her about it. But thanks for for bringing that to our attention. Okay, because there was one in the Oak Grove area of Herndon. So if you want any information, please let me know. Great, thank you. I'm, I'm jotting it down. Okay, thanks. Thank you very much. I'm going to mute you. And I think next on the list was um, Tammy uh, Manorino. So, Tammy, it looks like you should be able to unmute yourself now, see if that works. Yes, I was going to say, can you hear me? We can hear you. Great. Um, so I was wondering um, what kind of uh, detail you would like on the feedback. For example, Denise and a couple of others know about the um, the Randall um, Estates um, Historic District that's about to go on on the inventory for Fairfax County. You know, we have a wealth of information about that. Do Do you want a, a large package? Are you looking for just a quick summary? I'll let Blake answer that. Answer that. I think that's yeah up to the state. What? How much information you all want? Sure. Well, I mean, the goal would be that someone reading the report in the future has at least some basic information, and then they know where to go to get more information. So, if it's something that's going to be on file in in the county records or available online, I don't think we necessarily need to duplicate that within the report or within DHR records, but we do want to make sure that they're findable. So if you are um, able to share whatever form the information is in, where it's located, um, and we can make sure that that, that, that breadcrumb trail is, is made, um, if there is a, a write-up or a local nomination or something like that, that that could easily be included in the DHR file for um, the resource, we certainly can do that as well. Um, so if you can reach out and share a little bit more about the amount and type of data, I think we can map out the best way to make sure that it's linked to the report um, and, and our record. Okay, great. And then, um, so we were talking earlier, if, if there's nothing left of of an African American settlement, um, is that something that we that we still want to let you know about, or um, or is that you know sort of there's nothing to preserve there, so so we're not going to um, add that in. Well, uh, I know that there were some communities that we found that there there is nothing left, so uh, it, that is recorded in the history commissions inventory of the historical inventory. Uh, so we do have a record of that, a historical record of it. But if there's nothing left from a planning perspective, um, well, and let, let me just say this, it's not, it's a good thing for us to know where those, those places were because there are often archeological remnants that we need to be aware of and pay attention to. So. Um, I'm not exactly sure where you're thinking, Tammy, but um, let yeah, let me know, and and we can certainly, you know, uh, keep an eye on that. Yeah, I mean, you know, as, as we're doing this research, you know, more places are popping I, up. Um, I know, I know. It's not. It's great. Yeah, it 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 is. It's really great. I'm I'm sorry we didn't know about it ten years ago. You know, because some of these houses that are on top of it are pretty new. Um, so okay, yeah, all right, great. okay, thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tammy. Um, Mary Lipsy, it looks like you should be unmuted. Yes, I am. Um, I, I made one comment one of my uh, notes that I thought that we need improvement in some of the photos. I don't know how the who all are seeing this, but some of them are rel relatively dark and makes it difficult to see the architecture that you're referring to. So I would suggest that. I also had a question about sideburn. Because Sideburn is a community that goes back to the uh, 1900, but from the write-up, it sounds like it started in 1970 with the uh, suburb. 
So um, I was concerned about that because that whole African American community, well, you know, with David Penn and all of those, uh, was around 1907, I believe. Um, so I would like to see that that's recognized with their, you know, building of their homes and all that. And um, Denise, you can help me. The James Goins house. Mm -hmm. I yes. didn't see that in the um, uh, listing. It's at the very end. So we added um, James, James Goins. James, it's, it's really like literally the last paragraph. Um, Randall Estates, James Goins, and I can't, oh, Gunnell's Chapel. Um, those okay. three we added as um, an addendum to, or I don't, I don't know if you call it an addendum, but um, a little extra because those were uh, identified after the survey had okay. essentially been completed. Okay. My other question, and I thought Tammy would bring it up, is the Masonic Hall on uh, Backlick Road in Akatink. That Tammy, was survey. Yeah, I was going to say, I think that's, I that's, think that's, that's in there. Well, I missed that too, I guess. Okay. I, mm -hmm. I was trying to find the ones that I, that I knew of for sure. So I, I apologize with that. Um, I, I mean, the other comments that I've given are, are out there when you're referring to the ILDA and the Guinea Road Cemetery, there's a whole archeological study that was done of the Guinea mm -hmm. Road Cemetery with a lot of history and important information. So you may just want to refer to it. It is online um, or, you know, pick out some of the uh, details uh, that they have there because it's very specific on the um, way they identify the remains as the African Americans and, and all that. So um, that was uh, one other comment and Clark's Chapel uh, is, you know, an African American uh, church, and I just thought I needed some more information reporting about the church and the cemetery that is next to it. So, and I, I gave you some other comments, but those were the main ones uh, that I was interested in. Thank, Thank you, you very much. That's really helpful. And as for the photos, we can try to enhance some of those within the existing report, and we'll see if that improves things. Um, but certainly, you know, we want to be able to capture the the details that um, that we're describing within the text. So we appreciate you pointing that out. I just want to point out that Eve Runyon has commented that the Oddfellows Hall in Vienna is still standing and still in use. Thank you so much for, for that information. Great, thank you. Um, so right now I don't see anyone else's um, hands up and I do not see any other comments that have come through. Um, so we'll give it a few more minutes um, that the, the project team here will hang on. But if folks want to start, oh, looks like we've got um, Stevie, Stevie Carter. Carter. So I'm going to uh, see if I can unmute you. Um, sorry, give me just one moment. There we go. You should be unmuted now. Oh, let's try again. Sorry, having a little bit of trouble unmuting you. Um, give me just one moment. Mute. There we go. Now we got you. Sorry All about right. that. Go ahead. Yes, there's. I sent a whole list of places that you all that did. Yes, I sent a whole list of places that you all didn't recognize that was once a black community. And, um, you know, that should be on your list, too, because maybe those communities are no longer in existence. I didn't see the Robinson Family Cemetery on there down in Dunlorin. I didn't see the Pines. I didn't see Williamstown. I uh, didn't see Tremount. I didn't see the um, Hines community, which was in Baca, which was right around where the Jefferson Park is in Falls Church. 
I didn't, I don't know if you all put down Hughesville up in uh, the Braddock area. Old Courthouse Hills, I don't see that on there. See, you know, Vienna had a thriving black community as well. I see you didn't mention my grandparents, great grandparents farm, the Carter farm, which stayed in existence until almost 85, 86. Um, so, um, and I didn't see any of that stuff on And Plus my grandfather who moved to Vienna when it wasn't even incorporated in 1859. So he moved from Old Courthouse Hills to what is now the town of Vienna where the Seventh-day Adventist church is located. Sylvia B. Taylor. Okay. So, you know, I think you all need to, um, and, and you're not reaching out to the people you really need to reach out to. And it's really a shame because a lot of people didn't even know this was exi in existence. So you might really think about who your outreach is to, um, because I've talked to a lot of people that have lived in communities that were one thriving and they said they didn't even know you all were doing this. So, hey. um, you know, if you're going to put the list together of, of, you know, sites, community and places and things like that, I think you need to reach out probably to mostly the churches, the African American churches in, in Fairfax County, because that's where you're going to find the most people that have lived here a long time is with the churches and maybe some organizations like the Elks. Um, and maybe the, I don't know if there's a Masonic Temple down in Falls Church or not, but I know the Elks is pretty big around here. And, um, you know, you may want to think about that as well, because like I said, Vienna was a thriving community. And then, of course, I don't know if you know about the Vienna Trailblazer that's down at the Freeman House down in the town of Vienna. So there were a lot of Black Trailblazers here in, in Vienna and in Fairfax County. So that's what I'm recommending to you all and not just, you know, put your own list together because there's more information out there than you all are actually um, putting in place. Thank you so much, uh, um, Dee Dee. I, I appreciate those comments and, and actually that we're, we're reaching out today to get that information that that you're providing us right now. So I did receive your email and I was going to reach out to you um, and maybe have a separate conversation with you so we can, I mean, obviously you you have quite a bit of knowledge so we can get that knowledge from you and, and get your input. And, and okay, and, uh, and I, uh, if you can unmute me, I have reached out to some of the family members I raised my hand. Yeah, no, no, you're you're talking. We can hear you. Okay. We we can hear you. To some of the family members in some of these communities and things about what you all are doing. And they said nobody has reached out to them. They didn't even know this was in existence. So um, you know, I'm not sure how broad your focus is or where you're getting some of the information from. But if you speak to people that live in those communities, you'll get a lot more information. Yeah. No, that's, that's like great. I say, Sorry, go ahead. I, no, and then I was just saying that my great grandmother, Keziah Carter owned 50 acres out of Tyson's Corner and she and her mother burned down the first courthouse. So it was right there where JKJ was. So, and there's a plaque there. I don't know if you all noticed it or not, but the plaque needs to be changed because they say hostile Indians. They weren't hostile Indians. They were trying to take their land back. So, um, and that was by DAR. So like I say, my family, the Carter family has been around for a long period of time. We've been down, been around since Pocahontas days. So, you know, I'm just, just referencing back that, and they were free people. So they were not slaves, they were free people. Only her husband was a, was a slave, but her, the, her family was free. Thank you for, for that information. I, I would like to follow up with you, if I may, um, maybe tomorrow or so, sometime later this week, and we can have a longer conversation. Okay. Great. And I see a, a question came in in the uh, the chat concerning the um, Fort Belvoir lands. Um, 
because that's federal property, it was outside the scope of this project. Um, and I do see that you note here that Fort Belvoir does not have a historian. Um, I would add to that that um, work that, that happens on Fort Belvoir, since it is a federal installation, is subject to environmental review by the Department of Historic Resources. Um, so they are required to do cultural resource, historic resource survey when they're planning new facilities or working with their existing facilities. So we have a little bit of coverage um, in, in that regard, um, but it was not included in the scope of this project because, um, because of the federal ownership of the land. So thank you for pointing that out. I'm going to go ahead and drop the link to the survey in the chat here. So everybody can find it. And that's actually to the web page that has the survey on it and then also has our contact information for uh, follow up. And I've got um, Ron Chase with hand raise. So I'm going to um, try to unmute you here. Okay, can you see if you're able to unmute yourself now? Okay, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Okay, my question is, you, you referenced Fort Belvoir area. Now, um, I've not really looked at the draft. Uh, I saw just some elements of it, but I see where you have Woodlawn on the cover. So have you included their history in regards to Gum Springs, and how are you structuring their timeline? Because their early history does start at Belvoir. So how how are you doing that? The your, uh, the Woodlawn Church. The, uh, Correct. Yeah, the new Wood, Woodlawn Church. Mary, would yeah. um, you like to address the history that you wrote for that? Yeah, I I, I think I may have mentioned that I'm incapacitated and that my hard drive has crashed. And so anything that I talk about the report I'm doing from memory because I cannot access it. Um, but that is one of the few places in the Gum Springs area that we did because we knew that Gum Springs was having its own project, but that was already on the list. Um, if I'm thinking of it correctly, we spoke largely about the architecture. Um, it is a, a church that appears to have been frame and later bricked, which is not uncommon um, and has these wonderful towers that are sort of, I'm sorry, someone saying something? I think it's okay. an echo. It's, it's a reverb. Um, wonderful towers that were constructed later um, in a sort of a Gothic revival style, um, which is fairly common. Um, both the frame being rebricked and and the Twin Tower Gothic Revival style is is not an uncommon vernacular for African American churches. We did not we talked more about the architecture than the history again because we knew that Gum Springs was going to be part of a larger project and you know technically we probably should have left that off the list but I kind of really liked it so um, I did it anyway um, but but limited to the discussion and the analysis to the architecture knowing that gum spring was going to get a broader treatment and i didn't want to step on anybody's toes for that project does that make sense yeah maybe i'm i'm, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm not sure in regards to i don't i don't know if i would leave it out because of the larger project that gum springs is involved with uh, i i think um for for this county element that you're you're generating, I, I I would have thought you would have still included it. I hear what you're saying. I, I, I guess in that there's a whole other project with another consultant teams. We we didn't want to be redundant and duplicate efforts, and we wanted to be able to um, put our resources to things that were not going to be surveyed as as carefully. I just kind of 
knew that this was going to be covered in in greater detail with another project, but went ahead since it was on the initial list um, and, and got the field work for the photographic documentation out of the way. And I'll add to that, um, that we've mentioned in several points in the draft report, the um, concurrent work that's going on in Gum Springs. Um, so we can look at if there are additional opportunities to make sure that people reading the report in the future know that there is there will be an entire another documentation um, deliverable available to learn more about gum springs um, it's already in the report but we can see if there are other ways to to clarify that that's going on okay i i guess i i guess i'm i'm just finding some unclear elements especially if you're referencing an area and be it that Woodlawn got its start at at Belvoir, and it was there before before it became Belvoir, before it became Fort Humphrey, it was there. And so, um, unless, of course, all of that is is included in regards to the Gum Springs history. Um, it's it it still seems to me it should be probably included within both packaging. Okay, so we we will certainly um, address it with the Gum Springs survey, Ron, for sure, and we'll go back and make sure that um, the history is uh, recorded that uh, Woodlawn started where it started, and and make sure that it, it's in there. Thank you. Oh, yes, of course. Thank you. There's a question that came through from Mary Lipsy. Um, what are the years included in the survey? I know that there were some resources from the 1970s that were documented as part of the project. Um, and as was pointed out, uh, that is kind of the 50 year cutoff by which we tend to consider things. Um, historic by definition, but Mary Ruffin off the top of your head, can you think of. One the earliest or one of the earliest um, specific historic resources documented as part of the project. Oh, gosh, um, and again, I'm sorry, I, I can't pull it up in front of me. Um, you know, I would think that that the ruins at Odrick's corner fairly old. Um, among the older of the resources. Um, a lot of the older ones also were churches. And, you know, I feel like I'm preaching to the choir here uh, to, to extend the church metaphor. Um, when you look at African American communities, a lot of times, even after um, maybe the housing and the businesses are gone, the churches and sometimes the schools tend to be the institutions that continue that anchored the community and that continue after um, either things have been ripped down or areas have been gentrified and new new people and immigrants move into the neighborhood. So I would say a lot of the churches are probably among the older resources um, that were documented in this. Um, you know, when you do an architectural his survey, you know, what drives the document and the work is what you can see and what's above ground. Uh, and so in some cases, we went to communities that were traditionally African-American, but there weren't any resources left that were associated with African American occupation. Um, you know, there, there were new subdivisions, um, and we noted that. But that there is a bias in these kinds of projects, if you can call it a bias, to writing about places that still exist because you're documenting buildings or places or structures or objects. It doesn't mean that places that existed that don't have any resources aren't important and sh the, the history shouldn't be recorded. It's just that an architectural survey surveys architecture or surveys things that are above ground. So um, I, I hear what you're saying also about about one of the earlier comments about about places and communities. If we couldn't find anything that we felt comfortable that we could definitely tie into the African American experience or African American ownership in a place, um, then then we didn't serve it, but we may have mentioned it. So um, that history is probably something that ought to be in, in a document that is less tied, less closely tied to physical 
architectural survey. Yeah, I would thank you, Mary Ruffin, for that um, that clarification. And I would agree that you know we were looking specifically for we had the historical information with the history commission's inventory, and we were looking taking that information and looking for places on the ground in the built environment and structures that tied to that history. So this is was very much specifically an architectural history and and not um, an archaeological history or a documentation history. It was very much you know, focused on the architecture. And we broadened that to include cemeteries, which aren't necessarily typically included in architecture, but can be. And and we um, so we went ahead and, and broadened that to these the cemeteries as well. But that's not to say that you know that the the history isn't important or shouldn't be recorded. It's just that we were looking for you know, the 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 evidence in in the architecture. I'm going to step in. It looks like there is another question about uh, did we the Luther Jackson was built the first high school for blacks in the county in 1954. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure Luther Jackson's included in the survey. Yeah, I, yeah. I sur surveyed Luther Jackson. It is a big complex. So if you want to get a picture of every part of the exterior, you've got a lot to walk around. But um, we, we did indeed get Luther Jackson. And and as I recall, that's the one near the Merrifield Baptist Church. So you, you start to get a nexus of, again, a church and a school being mm -hmm. the most prominent, easily identifiable resources associated um, with that community. Okay, it looks like we've lost Blake. So I'm gonna- No, and Laura, <laughs> the I think the host. I'm gonna go, he's the, he's the, I don't, I don't, I, I'm glad we're still all here because he's the, Post, but right, right. I, I can read the chat. The next one, there's a, the Hughes home at Braddock Road and Fairfax County Parkway. Part of Hughesville. Hughesville yeah. So th thank you, Mary, for that information. We'll look into that. Okay. And then one last question. It looks like if a church was built in 1925, is it included? It's um, certainly. I would say it's certainly eligible to be included. Um, we had a, yeah. a set list of things to look at um, and, and didn't go much beyond that set list. Um, but if it's something that was not included and it's still there, um, then definitely I think you ought to bring it to someone's attention. There was one near Falls Church. I want to say it was um, maybe Second Baptist. Um, it was near a First Baptist um, and a church that looks like it doesn't have a particularly active congregation, um, but a, an older church that had, had yet to be documented, at least as far as oh, Third Baptist. Thank you, Maddie McCoy. Um, just a sweet, dear little building on a funny little lot. Um, um, but um, I loved that building. And, and again, I think it, it told a story and it really spoke to me when I documented and um, one of the things, again, and we've said this before, but part of this is is to also get these things on the map so that both the state and the county have them in their historic resources layer or their historic resources map so that when decisions are made, you know, they know that there's something important there. And I know that that Third Baptist was something that had not yet been surveyed. Some of these were survey updates. Let's go make sure they're still out there in good shape. But I'm I'm always particularly excited as someone who cares about preservation when I document a resource that hasn't been mapped yet. And I I know that there's that whole you know expression about Columbusing something like you're you're doing something we all knew it was there, and and I get that. But if if the state doesn't know it and the county doesn't know it from a government perspective, then a lot of times bad decisions can be made. So for me personally, Third Baptist was a big thrill because there, there was no record on, for it at the state's Department of Historic Resources, and it wasn't on the county's list. So now there's a pin in the map where that is saying, hey, this is important. And it's just a neat looking little church as well. Right. Um, um, Blake just texted me. <laughs> yeah, his webinar cut up. 
I'm letting him know. Um, we have one other question. It looks like, why are you excluding families in places that existed more than 50 years ago? Um, so, um, we're, we really are not trying to exclude anything. We're trying to be as, as you know, as inclusive and pos as possible. And that's why we're coming out to the community to find out what you think we've missed. And I know that um, as you referenced, Didi, you, you sent me an email earlier today with a whole list of places that we missed. So we're certainly going to look at those and, and incorporate those um, into the final draft. And we really appreciate your, your input and, and feedback. And I would just also add, and I'll, I'll try not to dominate the conversation here, but um, I know it's frustrating when there are places that are important to you and you get a report and they're not there and you feel like they've been disrespected or neglected or, or unnoticed. One thing I would just suggest is that, you know, history evolves. Every time you have a project like this, there, there are limitations in terms of time, in terms of budget. Um, we started with a list the History Commission had developed, um, and they knew that wasn't an exhaustive list. So I, I, I would just encourage you, first of all, to continue to be passionate advocates for these places you think that were left out, but to know that it was not meant to be disrespectful or, or out of any sloppy or laziness, but we, there was a certain amount of money and a, and a certain amount of time that something could be done, and we wanted to start with something. And this should be considered a springboard. Um, you know, I, I'm always excited. Uh, people think I'm crazy, but when people come to public meetings and have a lot to say, because that means you care and that you know things and that you're passionate and that I know that you're going to be advocates for these places. So just know that that if, if something is not in that report, that's not the only report that's ever going to be done. It's the first step and it's a start and it was based on some information that the History Commission had developed. Um, and it needs to be expanded on. And so, you know, by coming out and by giving this information, you're helping shape the next study. You're helping shape, um, you know, the stepping off point for, for how this understanding of this part of Fairfax County's history should be developed in the future. So um, Fairfax County is lucky to have, first of all, a lot of preservationists, some of whom, you know, I guess, go across the river and work in DC. So you've got a very sophisticated preservation community, but you also have a very passionate local community um, who may not be preservation professionals, but they know their history and who show up to these meetings. So again, please, please don't think if something wasn't in there that it's not important. Um, it might not have been known, but it's it's not not that it's not important or that that it won't be included as we move forward. But you have to start somewhere, and that's where we started. Um, and hopefully. Um, those of you, particularly those of you who, who feel very strongly about this, um, and again, I, I'm the consultant, I'm in the private sector, I can say this, get in touch with your elected officials. Tell them that this is important. Tell them that the planning department needs to have continued funding to be able to continue to survey all these things so that they're all documented, so they're all explicated, so that they're all mapped, and so that you can have the completest story that you have. Um, anybody who shows up to a public meeting on a Monday night via Zoom cares. And I know that you're the kind of people who will follow up. So I would encourage you to do that. Yeah, thank you so much for your, your comments um, up, up to this point and um, all the comments that we've received so far, all the comments that we received tonight. We are, um, I think it said at the beginning, we put out what we know but we know that we don't know everything. So we're asking you all to comment on the survey. Let us know what we missed. Let us know what we got wrong. But also, you know, if we got something right, you know, <laughs> let us know that too. Um, we appreciate all of the comments that we've received. I did see um, we have one last comment in here. Okay, yeah, yeah, just where to find um, information. So I in the chat tonight, I, I dropped the link to the web page that has this, the draft survey report. And then it also has my contact information and Blake's contact information. You can email either one of us. You can email both of us. Um, you can give me a call. I think, I think my number's on there. Um, probably best to email because I'm um, running a million different directions all the time, but um, I'll get back to you within 24 hours. And I know I owe some of you some follow-up uh, emails or phone calls. 
and we'll get to that this week as well. Great. Thank you so much. Um, we really appreciate everyone being here. I'm going to put the web page for the survey report into the chat one more time. Um, and I cut out for a minute, but I hope folks notice that I also dropped in some links for grant funds that can support um, documentation and rehabilitation of historic resources along with uh, Aubrey Von Linderen's contact if you have questions about those grant programs. So please do take a look at those. We have um, some exciting new funding sources available across the state um, that can support the important furthering of this work. So thank you everyone. Have a good night and we look forward to sharing the final report with you. Thanks everybody. Thank you. Thanks for coming out.